Hello viewers and friends, welcome back to my channel BST African Electronic Surgery on a Thursday afternoon 30 March, one day to go to month end So, last time I explained the we started actually lessons for beginners because uh, I can see from the comment people they really need to know many things about laptop repairs so two days ago we started uh, lesson number one where I explained the the, the many 19 volts power input circuit how it works from the charging port to the battery if you didn't see the video, I think you have to go there and see the video. Let me check if I can get it. That's our channel. 487 subscribers, 118 videos. Our channel is growing. I can't believe. So that's the video. Laptop motherboard, uh, motherboard the repair crash course for beginners. If you didn't see this video, you have to go back and uh, start there so that you won't miss anything, okay? So, now, let's move on to lesson number two. Lesson number two, today we will explain about the, let me adjust my webcam so that you can see. I don't want you guys to miss anything. This is our second lesson. Lesson number two. So, lesson number two, we, explain ab we shall explain about the 3.3 volts and five, and five volts power supply. How the 3.3 and 5 volts power supply is working on laptop motherboards. Because after checking on, a, on your laptop, you check the first MOSFET, second MOSFET, current sensor, all power supply on ceramic capacitors, you have 19. What is your next step? That's where we are going. So the next step is to check the 3.3 volts power supply because this power supply is always on even if the laptop is off so 80% or 90% of the problems comes from the 3.3 volts power supply or relate, are related to the 3.3 volts power supply because this is always on even if your laptop is off so obvious at some point bad things can happen in relation to this power supply which i'm going to explain here so we'll explain about the 3.3 and 5 volts power supply we'll also explain about the the bios chip how bios chip is working and how to identify bios chips on laptop motherboards and also we'll explain about the ec SIO chip, startup chip, I don't know how you call it, startup chip, some they call it microcontroller, microcontroller, so we we'll explain about all these things, okay, so where can you start? Because we have to start at certain point. We have to start at certain point. So we have the I think I need a new sheet so that I can explain clearly. This, this, I was just giving you titles of what I'm going to explain here. 
from the VCC. 19 volts. VCC. VCC. We have the first MOSFET, second MOSFET, and the current sensor. From the current sensor, where our voltage is going, is going everywhere. So, that the 19 volts from the VCC. We have many power supplies there, but let's focus on 3.3 and 5 volts power supply. From the VCC, we have some capacitors, ceramic capacitors on, on the input of each and every power supply. We have like two, three, four, depending on motherboard. One side of capacitor is ground and the other side is plus. Let's put just two here. Plus, plus 19. The other side is connected to plus 19 volts. The other one is connected to to ground. Okay. So here we have MOSFETs. That's our MOSFETs. We have another MOSFETs which is connected to ground. Here we have a, these are exactly acting as switches, exactly acting as switches. Four pins together, and then three pins together. That's our gate. That's our gate. Three pins together on the second MOSFET four pins together connect connected to ground can be channel a and channel p that's less important so this is the four pins four pins that the drain three pins source and that's our gauge drain and source so where this gate is going here we have our driver here it's going straight to the chip switching up down up down up down up down up down we will create voltage here here What do we have here? We have the coil. After the coil, we have the electrolyte electrolyte capacitors on the output. That the that's our capacitor. One side is connected to ground. One side is connected to plus. But in order for this chip, that's our IC chip, five one two two five IC. In order for this chip to know what is happening here on the output, if you check on each and every pin, there is a feedback there. Because they use a current sensor. That's our current sensor. Current sensor. Because what this current sensor is doing is sending signal to the chip that everything is up and running here on the output. So this current sensor is checking any excess voltage, under voltage, things like that. In that way, 
it will send signal to the chip and uh, this chip will command this MOSFET to cut down the power if there is anything wrong there so here we have output capacitor which is an electrolyte and what do we have here we have 3.3 volts output that's our 3.3 volts power supply this chip can be 51225 can be 1225 IC can be 51223 can be RRT that's RRT 8205 you find the different kinds of chip but all those chip they are doing the same thing so this this chip is is outputting 3.3 volts and the same chip the same chip here here we have another power supply here let's draw another power supply ceramic capacitors connected to ground plus 19 volts that's the VE after that we have two MOSFETs those are MOSFETs this one four pins connected to ground in this what do we have we have a three pins together three pins together our gate is going to the chip here our gate of the other MOSFET is going to the chip again this is this these are just the switches switching up and down up down up down up down i think this happens maybe more than 40,000 times per second we will create voltage here we have a coil same what do you have? We have the electrolyte capacitor, that's the plus, that's the minus. And uh, what do you have here? We have 5 volts output here. You see? We have this, this output, we have another output here. But uh, only one regulator. So if you check on motherboards, if you see two coils, like four MOSFETs in the driver, that's another easy way to identify this, the 3.3 and 5 volts power supply. So here we also have feedback. That's our current sensor. Very low ohms resistor. Which is giving feedback current sensor for the feedback so after you checked the 19 you are satisfied 19 volts is present on all power supplies on the input second first MOSFET second MOSFET the, sec the second thing is to check for 3.3 volts power supply the 3.3 volts power supply you will see a chip with the two four MOSFETs outputting 3.3 and 5 volts from this regulator so many people there's 3.3 volts and 5 volts power supply Many people get lost there. They check the 19, 19 volts is present. 
The next thing they found it hard to identify the 3.3 volts power supply. It's easy. It's easy. This chip, how do we found the 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 3.3 and 5 volts power supply? We'll go there. We'll go there. We'll, at first, let's understand how this power supply is working. This, power, this chip is regulating 3.3 volts and is regulating 5 volts. You check here. You check at this point. You put your multimeter on it, on it, on a diode mode. You check here. You don't have a short. You check. Let's call this this number one. First output. You check here on the output. It's not shorted to ground. You check this one. It's not shorted to ground. And probably this chip is getting hot. You change the chip two, three times, still the chip is getting hot. Obviously, if you see this chip getting hot, the next step you say, this chip is faulty. And uh, you are wrong. Because this power supply is not outputting only two voltages. This power supply is outputting four voltages. We have this, this main 3.3, we have the main 5 volts, and if you check on the, on the chip itself, we have the, we have the VREG3 here, we have the VREG3, VREG 3.3 and uh, on the same ch chip we have VREG voltage regulator 5.5 5 volts so this chip is outputting these two main voltages and here they are low output power supply we don't have coils here if you check this chip is surrounded by ceramic capacitors if you check on those ceramic ceramic capacitors you you get 3.3 volts you also find 5 volts probably for the usb hard drive but from this vreg 3 my microcontroller or a startup chip or a e EC chip is getting power. It's not getting power from this three point three volts. So if you find this chip getting what check this VREG three. Let's call this one in three third output and the fourth output here. Check this VREG three because from this pin our microcontroller or a startup chip is getting power. So, probably if you come with your power supply at this point, I'm 100% sure your startup chip will be getting hot or will be taking too much current because it will be shorted, okay? So, if you see that chip getting hot, it's not, it doesn't mean that it is fault. It's getting hot because it, at this juncture, this three point three, this V rate three, our microcontroller is getting power. Okay, so we have like four voltages. I think that one is clear. So the next step. You check 19, you check 3.3. It means your body has passed the condition to start up the motherboard. 
the the startup sequence you must have 19 volts you must have 3.3 .3. if you have those voltages you are ready your board is ready to be powered on and if it's not coming on try to find out why it is your, your motherboard is not turning on or your laptop is not turning on so how do we found the 3.3 .3 and 5 watts power supply here there are three steps three steps to find 3.3 volts and 5 volts power supply the first step the first step I know theory is boring but in order to understand what's going on there it's good to start with the theory let's put this aside the the first step to identify the 3.3 and 5 volts power supply here we have what do we have we have the bios chip bios chip and uh, here we have the EC, that's our EC or startup chip or a microcontroller controller can be ITE or ENE Nova to Lenovo, so many different types kinds of uh, microcontroller so the bios chip is a chip like a mosfet but it's bigger than mosfet in terms of size so our bios chip has got uh, like four legs one two three four one five six seven eight and here we have a dot here that's our pin number one exactly that's how you locate a mother a bios chip on laptops motherboard so it's got like eight legs pin number one two three four pin number four p4 is ground and uh, the pin which is corresponding to the dot that's pin number eight this one p8 pin number eight that's the vcc is carrying 3.3 volts you have to understand this so you put your multimeter on diet mode the black probe to ground the other probe to to pin number eight of the bios chip if you don't have a short there if you have a short it's very easy you can come with the 3.3 .3 on pin number eight and see what is getting what is taking power but uh, we want to go on these steps to identify the 3.3 .3 and 5 volts power supply so the first step is to go step one step one is to go on pin number eight of the bios chip you put your multimeter on a diode mode you know the beeping mode tin 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 you put it here you put your one probe here check with the other probe if it's not grounded if it's not grounded go on coils with the other probes and see where is this pin interbeeping with the another power supply 
like uh, zero resistance. We check to cause. If we fail to check to cause, if you can't find it on cause, you go on the uh, on cheap boys, especially on new on new models of a laptop nowadays. You don't have coils on some motherboards. You find a chip is regulating these voltages, no coils. So if you didn't find on coils where this pin is beeping, go on chips. If you find where it is beeping, that's your 3.3 volts power supply and if you found the 3.3 volts power supply that should be also 5 volts power supply because in most cases they move together okay so that is the first step to find the 3.3 and 5 volts power supply go on the bias chip put your test meter on diet mode one probe to pin number eight check to cause or a check to to do cheap I'm sure to all the chips I'm sure you get a link there step number two to find the 3.3 and 5 watts power supply maybe especially on the new models of motherboards this BIOS chip is not you won't find this BIOS chip like a on the mother or like a external bus chip this bus chip will be inside this microcontroller on new models and on this chip surrounded this chip is surrounded you find like four or five ceramic capacitors connected to ground some ceramic capacitors connected to ground the other side of capacitor is connected to ground and the other one is connected to 3.3 volts 3.3 volts 3.3 volts the other sound this the other side is ground here another ceramic capacitor ground in 3.3 if you can't find the bias chip go around it. i'm sure the microcontroller is is there go on the locate the microcontroller check around the microcontroller you see the capacitors like ceramic capacitors the one side one side of those capacitors is connected to 3.3 volts the other side is ground you put your mount meter again on diode mode you check from the plus of one ceramic capacitor to another around the con controller if you see beeping that's a 3.3 volts power rail if you see two three beeping together that's a 3.3 volts link so you put your multimeter on the plus of the ceramic and check to coils or you check to to, to chips I'm sure you get a link. So step number one, you come from the VCC pin of the bias chip, pin, pin number eight, VCC pin. Step two, you come from the plus of the ceramic capacitors around the microcontroller to the cores or to the chip. That's our step two. And uh, step number three, you know, you have, you have USB. You have USB. Let's go back a little bit here. We have these five volts. These five volts. These five volts is going to a drive is going to the USBs from these five volts here we have our USB with four pins 
the the other pin is connected to five volts the other pin connected to ground and uh, sorry this five volts is coming to the plus to the plus pin and the two middle pins they are for the data these are the data lines okay so but this 5 volts is not just passing from the 5 volts power supply straight to the USB. Between this, there is a chip, like a MOSFET, a small MOSFET. Yeah, that's what we found here. Four pins together, here yeah, three pins together, and the gate. What this MOSFET is doing is cutting down the power in line with the short comes from uh, you know customers they are playing with the usb or if you have any short on the usb like broken usb shorted pins in most cases you see this chip blown up it's a small mosfet exactly mosfet is is passing five volts from the five volts power supply to the usb okay so step number three if you come here on the on the output of this chip you put your multimeter on diode mode they must be linked with the 5 volts power supply if you find the 5 volts power supply that is also the 3.3 volts power supply okay so that's step number three you check from the usb ports if you locate the 5 volts power supply, that must be also 3.3 volts power supply. So, um, that's how the 3.3 and 5 volts power supply is working. Hope you get it. So, um, let me see if you can find like a random schematics. So that we can relate to what we have explained here. <coughs> but usually I am not working with the schematics. Let's see if I can find the schematics. Uh, maybe. Maybe I can find something. Uh, let, let's just pick a random schematics usually I'm not working with the schematics but I just pick a random schematics ok this one is for what ASA, ASA Aspire 5336 Okay, processor, LCD, connector, HDMI, I want to go on power supplies, I want to go on power supplies, most of the problems comes from power supplies, you see that the PC, PCI Express graphics chip Okay, let me check for power supplies. That the clock generator was you need a clock on motherboard. I explained about the the BIOS chip that I I explained is keeping some settings, but in order to for those settings to be alive. They use a BIOS battery. SATA connector. Where are the power supplies? You 
you see E and E that is the startup chip here yeah. and uh, you see these capacitors these capacitors like one two three four five they are connected to three three volts the other side is ground so those are the ceramic capacitors which i was explaining which are surrounded on the microcontroller that the ene kb926 power on button is also coming from the controller before the controller between the controller and the power, power on button they use a resistor there and uh, it's sending 3.3 to ground that's the condition for for switch to turn on the motherboard that's easy audio power amplifier C uh, I'm trying to locate the the 3.3 volts and 5 volts per yes you see exactly what I told you you see here RT 8205 this chip that's our 3.3 and 5 volts power supply you see this 3.3 volts and one the other five side five volts but if we look close let me zoom zoom if you check close on the chip we have this vreg 3 I can't edit because I, I opened on PDF, but I'm highlighting this VREG3. From this VREG3, which is coming here, from this three three volts, our microcontroller or a startup chip is getting power. It's not getting power from this from this 3.3 volt from this many 3.3 is getting from this from the vreg 3 and we must also have a we must also have a vreg 5 yes this one that's our fourth output low power supply around the one 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 seventy five milliamps this is a low output power supply no coils there so that's the thing that's the thing you see ceramic capacitors which i told you after the ceramic capacitors just to concentrate on my case of the mouse because i can't edit here we have some ceramic capacitors two mosfets the coil after the coil we have the, the output capacitor but uh, we have this pin after soon after the coil we have this wire this pin with this resistor that's for the feedback because this chip has to know what is go what's going on on the output so they use a current sensor there for the feedback same this side two mosfet coil output five volts and that the feedback so we have fb1 and fb2 so that's the thing about uh, about uh, schematics so let's go back so I explained, uh, I draw the schematics, I showed you the, how the schematics they are, but usually I'm not working with the schematics because I'm not there. 
I'm not on the side of working with the schematics because already I know all the chips, all what they are supposed to do. So I'm on the other side of the coin, working without schematics. So anyway, we've done some theory and uh, we can do a little bit of practical. I have like a two, three boards here. Maybe. Okay. So this is an ESA board. Let's try to identify the 3.3 .3 and 5 volts power supply. We have the charging connector here. Let me adjust my webcam. One second. So let's see if we see something here. What we just learned. This is an ASA motherboard with the charging port. And uh, our first input MOSFETs, they are here. After the two MOSFETs, the current sensor is on the other side here. Our black thing. So, here we have two power supplies, that's for the processor. And uh, we have some coils here. This power supply is close to the RAM socket, so probably this power supply is for the, for the RAM voltage, 1.5 volts power supply. If you check here, Check here. Hope we are seeing. Because my microscope is misbehaving. We have a, we have a two coils. Four MOSFETs, two here, two here. Those ceramic capacitors. And that's the driver. So... This is the 3.3 .3 and 5 volts power supply. That's the one. You know what? I think uh, we can check some voltage there. Let's use our power. Let's let, let's play. Let's play with motherboards. Let's play with motherboards. Where's our charging port? This is the right time to play with the motherboards. I'll solder some wires. Ground. And the plus. Well, let's locate our plus on the charging port. We have four pins there. Two are minus, two are plus. Ground, ground. Meaning to say those two ones are on the plus. So... That's perfect. So let's use our power supply, 19 volts. Even with the 20 volts, nothing can go wrong. 1.9. Let's work with 3 amps. Good. White is ground. And the uh, this one, the red is the plus, okay. So let's check the 19 volts. You can see our power supply is taking like 10 milliamps, which is normal because that is standby current. 
for a non-working motherboard that is very normal so let's go on lesson number one we explain about the input circuit so the input of the first MOSFET oh our mount meter is on diet mode let's put it on one volts 20 volts on the output 20 on the input of the second 20 on the output 20 let's go on those ceramic capacitors we are satisfied that our first two MOSFETs they are driving the power to the motherboard what is the next step is to check if your 19 volts is being distributed on all the power supplies you check on every power supply on the input I'm sure there are ceramic capacitors there checking here I don't know which power supply is this we have 20 volts here we have another power supply 20 I check two different power supply so at this point we can conclude that our 19 volts power rail is present the next step that's where we are today to check the 3.3 volts power supply we do have a BIOS chip here next to the microcontroller that's ENE let's check last pin of the BIOS uh, last time I checked I think I know this board. The, the, the pin number 8 is not going there to the, the, the microcontroller. Actually, the 3.3 volts on the VCC pin is being enabled after, after the board is turned on. So, we can go straight on those ceramic capacitors around the controller. What do we have here? See on the test meter. I'm checking our ceramic capacitors around the controller. 3.39. Let's check a different capacitor. 3.39. Let's check a third one. 3.39. We checked the 19. We checked the 3.3. Because this 3.3 is always on, even if the bo the motherboard is off. So in most cases, we are getting problems with the 3.3 volts power supply because it's always on. Obvious, if something is always on, you know the pressure of the currents and power at some point, the power supply can fail. We checked the 3.3, we checked the 5 volts. What is the next step? Is to locate the switch button connector. And uh, it's here. There we must have 3.3 volts. First pin, second pin, 3.17, you see? Three point thirty nine. So even on the connector, we do have three point three volts there. So our board is ready to be powered on. So in this case, we don't have the 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 switch button. So I'll use a tweezer. I'll short the three point three to ground. I'll go pin by pin. P number one, no, P number two, P number two to ground. Our fan is spinning. And it just went off. Let's try one more time.
one more time is on let let's check other voltages do you have five volts five volts what about on the other side maybe it's on who knows one point five two here yeah. 0 0.89 on this capacitor 1.52 so this board is on i can feel the processor is getting warm because all these voltages they are being turned on after you have pressed the power on button because on the RAM voltage, I'm sure they must be. You see that 1.52. The the RAM power supply is 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 off and is being turned on after you have turned on the the motherboard. So clearly, this motherboard is a working one. So that's how you identify things. You know what? let's play with motherboards let's check a different one let's check a different one what is this we have this one let's sold uh, two wires ground and we have to know which one is our plus here Diodes So the first pin These are both for for space so we can afford to play. These are not for customers. These are our own boards. So we can afford to play. So let's connect our power supply. Ground and plus ground and plus you know i think you see you know you are now getting the sense of uh, what we are doing here because uh, 99 percent of the motherboards the schematics is almost the same except on the macbooks yeah you uh, at some point you need schematics but uh, here on the majority of motherboards you don't need schematics so you can see the standby current is uh, 14 milliamps so let's check some voltage there the input Okay, dial volts. Let's see now. Ground. I need to stick ground here. And the class of the charging port, 19. The input of the first MOSFET. 19 output 19 obvious on the input of the second MOSFET 19 
and uh, on the output of the second MOSFET 19. These are some kind of, uh, I think it's an HP board. And this one, MOSFETs are clear. Next to the charging port, they are connected in serial mode. On the current sensor, 19. So our 19 volts is present. Let's check on those ceramic capacitors. Here we have a power supply. 19. Here. 19. Here. 19. So we don't have problem with our 19 volts power, power, power supply, power rail. The next step is to 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 check for 3.3 volts power supply we do have the IE, that's the IET chip and here we have a BIOS chip on pin number 8 we said it's the VCC pin we must have 3.3 volts there so let's check here 3.3 you can see on the screen so if we have 3.3 on the BIOS chip that means even on the controller we have 3.3 volts there yeah but to prove that we can check three point thirty three you see I'm checking on ceramic capacitors around the microcontroller even on the controller itself three point twenty nine so where's the power button for this board an idea an idea I think it's this one. I think it's this one. Yeah, it is. You can see on the screen this connector. The first pin has got three volts, second pin, three point twenty-nine. So we have 3.3 and uh, 19 volts on the switch button connector we have 3.3 volts so the next thing is to try to power on the motherboard same with the tweezer shorting 3.3 to ground You can see the light here. We have light here. Maybe you can't see it. You see that light? That one. So our board is working. But to prove that it's now on, we can check the power supply which are which are being turned on after we have pressed the power on button. We can check for the RAM voltage, one point something. Because if this board is on, we must have voltage on the RAM. No, it went off. Our board just went off. Let's try to power on one more time. One more time. On. I can see the LED here. Let's check for for some voltages. One point five two. You can see. So we have voltage for the room. Zero. Okay, that's the rim power supply. What do we have here? Nothing. 
you hear nothing our boat is coming on and goes off for some reasons but that's not the idea we're not fixing anything the idea is how you can follow the step to check uh, to to do the proper checkings on a uh, on motherboards you check the 19 volts you check the 3.3 .3, which is meant to be on all the time and uh, if all is okay we try to power on the the motherboard if we have 3.3 .3, you have uh, 19 volts you press the power on button your motherboard is not responding can be many reasons but the easy way is to 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 check the how the voltage is behaving when you press the power on button that 3.3 .3, is it sending to to zero if it's sending to zero but it's not uh, responding probably you have a dead microcontroller it's not always but uh, sometimes it's working so can you check one more board i think we can what's the hurry because the idea is for for everyone to to understand how laptop motherboards are working so this is also a some other board but i'm not sure about the model so we use our cables and try to to check few things here good that's better so let's connect power supply let's connect our power supply turn by current 15 16 milliamps to me sound okay so let's check some things let's check some things plus of the charging port 90 on this one the first mosfet we have a bigger MOSFET here 19 the output 19 output of the second MOSFET 19 so again our 19 volts power rail is present here let's check on any power supply this one 19 here 19 here we have another power supply 19 so our 19 volts power rail is present the next step is uh, to check for the 3.3 .3 volts power supply for 3.3 .3 volts but we can check on the controller on those uh, capacitors 1.75 maybe that's not the one maybe why 1.75 yeah you can see 3.29 another one 3.28 so probably that 1.75 is going somewhere 
So we have uh, 3.3 volts. Okay. That's good. That's good if you have 3.3. And uh, here, you can see this power supply, two coils, four MOSFETs, maybe I can bring this closer. We have this power supply, this coil is next to the REM socket, so that probably this is the REM power supply. And here we have two coils, four MOSFETs, output capacitors, and we have the driver. Let's check. The, the for the capacitors around the chip you can see 5 volts which I told you that's the VREC 5 we do have 5 volts and uh, here we have 3.27 that's the VREC 3 so from this point our microcontroller is getting power okay and if i'm to look what chip is this it's a 1225c and the other one for this the previous board was a let me see 511 you can see it's clear. Two coils, MOSFETs, MOSFETs like four, the driver, and the output capacitors. That's good. So let's try to locate the switch button connector, which I believe is here. Yeah, it's written here. Let's check for 3.3 .3 volts there. First pin, second pin, 3.26. Third pin, 3.26. Fourth pin, 3.29. Let's try to power on the, the motherboard. If you can with a tweezer. We must see light. Maybe we can't. It's on. You can see the LED. Uh, you can see this LED. This one. Our motherboard is on. So. You can check other voltages just to understand what we have explained. We have power supply here 3.11, that the charging IC circuit. You have more coils, what do you have here? 0 0.85. Maybe that's for the processor. One volt. Maybe it's for graphics. Here, what do you have here? 5.21. And here, the same point which I told you. 3.43. So that the 5 volts and the 3.3 volts power supply. What about this one? 1.36 that's the rim voltage so easy so hopefully you learn something today and um, yeah we we'll try to to explain many things because we have to move together obvious i don't know everything but uh, I think it's a good moment to help each other to get there.
remember we are on the journey so we have to reach a point where you start to know everything about electronics because uh, the whole idea especially to me I would love everyone to know many things especially electronics because probably it is the future so we have to understand how things works we have to understand how things works if you love electronics like me because uh, i take it as a hobby i take it as a hobby and uh, i love electronics so hopefully you understand how the 3.3 and 5 3.3 volts and 3.3 and 5 volts power supply is working and also we explained about the BIOS chip because the whole idea of this lesson was to 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 see how the 3.3 and 5 volts power supply is working the the microcontroller the microcontroller that the controller of everything is controlling all the power supplies including the screen so that's what the microcontroller is doing and the, the BIOS chip you know the BIOS settings they are kept on the BIOS chip but in order for them to be alive they use a BIOS battery, you see, this BIOS battery is also 3 volts, that's a 3 volts battery the BIOS battery and uh, yeah, especially on these new le new models of laptops, I found like a, you can find, you can get a corrupt BIOS but like a shorted BIOS chip, I don't remember getting a, a, a like a shorted bias chip i never found any during my history of repairs but a corrupt bios yeah the program from the bios chip can get corrupt and uh, what i'm using i'm using i bought a programmer let me sh see if i can show you I bought this programmer. Where is that software? It's the EZP <coughs> 2009. This one. It's easy to use. You, re you connect to read the chip, erase, write, verify. That's what I'm using in most of the laptops with corrupt, with corrupt BIOS chips. I'm flashing the BIOS and reload the software. So, thank you. Hopefully, you enjoy my video. Like, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for future updates. And also, comment and share our videos to your beloved ones. See you on the next one. Bye.